So on this video, uh, we will be covering uh, the information on chondrichthys. Chondrichthys are cartilage fish. This is going to include uh, stingrays, skates, and sharks. Beginning with sharks, um, sharks have five to seven gill slits depending on the species of the shark. Um, one of the questions I always ask my students is, could you describe the, uh, the lungs of a shark? Now think about the amphibian, they're two simple air sacs. Think about the size of the lungs of a human. Would uh, these be uh, large lungs? Would they be small lungs? And then I would come back and tell you they don't have lungs, they have gills. So, um, going over this again, they have five to seven gills uh, slits, depending on uh, the uh, species of shark that you're looking at. Their body is, is rough. It's covered with uh, placoid scales. That's what gives it the, that rough uh, feel that it has. Um, the teeth are large, and if we were to open the mouth of a shark, you would see that there are rows and rows of teeth. So once it loses one tooth, there's a tooth behind it. They have a streamlined body that allows them to move through the, the water very efficiently. They uh, are believed to have um, color blindness. And um, the shark that we would be dissecting in class would be a dogfish shark. If we look at the cardiovascular system, Sharks have a closed circulatory system. They have a two-chambered heart, one atrium, one ventricle. That's a test question. Um, they have three senses to uh, help them to detect what's around them in the environment. They have smell, they have electric current, and they have a lateral line system, which allows them to determine pressure movements. Stingrays and skates both live on the ocean floor. They're gonna have uh, pectoral fins that are enlarged that are gonna give them a wing-like uh, appearance. Uh, the stingrays have a venomous spine. Uh, if you uh, go to a location and they allow you to pet the stingrays, many times what they've done is they've cut those barbs. And the barbs have to be uh, continuously trimmed, usually every uh, six months. Um, they have electrical rays that can stun prey with electrical shock. Uh, the voltage can reach up to 300 volts. And here I just wanted to show you a picture of uh, some of the various types of uh, sharks that exist. There's over 400 different species. And then we placed a human right over here just to give you a, a scale version of the sizes of some of these uh, sharks. Again, um, the, uh, the dogfish shark is the classic example that's used for dissection in a classroom setting. Uh, looking at the shark, you can see their dorsal fin, their caudal fin. Uh, you can see um, their, the eyes, the gill slits, the snout. Now again, the snout is not going to be open going down to a trachea and lungs like we would have in mammals. But what we have is a snout being located right there, the brain in this area here, and it would have the olfactory bulb and the olfactory nerves going down to the snout, allowing it to smell. Um, the, we have the anal fin. We have, uh, notice that it has two dorsal fins. Um, and then you've got your gills. Now the gills are gonna be highly vascularized. They're gonna have a lot of of capillaries and blood vessels and that's going to allow for the pressure a water pressure over the gills and that will force that air the oxygen from the water over into those capillaries uh, and those blood vessels that are in the gills so that it can get the oxygen that it needs so how do you look at and tell if a shark is a male or a female these structures right here are called claspers, and the claspers are found on the male sharks. These are not present on the female. Now you can also use the presence of the claspers on stingrays and skates in order to tell if they're male or female as well.
So I want to show you some different species of um, sharks that exist. This one right here is the dogfish shark. The dogfish shark is typically uh, what is used in uh, biology dissections to learn the anatomy of um, cartilage fish. This right here is the uh, mandarin shark. Now the mandarin shark, uh, the reason that it's, it's given this name is because of these Fu Manchu type of whiskers that it has. This is the uh, nurse shark. So many times people will come back from vacation, they've been at the beach and they're like, oh, I swam with sharks. Well, it's usually the nurse shark that has been swimming around them. These are very do uh, docile. Um, these will come up to you. They will, will not instigate any kind of attack, but they'll swim around. Now this one, this scary guy right here is known as the goblin shark. And this is a pretty rare type of shark. Um, the, um, this particular shark has been found around Japan. Here we have the hammerhead shark with its wide hammerhead type snout. And we have the tiger shark. This is the black tip shark and you can tell by the black tip on the dorsal fin. And then we have the uh, great white which is the largest predatory shark that's out there. Now this one right here is the bull shark. The bull shark can actually swim up into brackish water and into fresh water. So uh, occasionally you'll hear of a shark attack in fresh water and that's going to be due to the bull shark. This one right here is the largest of all sharks. It's the whale shark. Um, they can get up to lengths of 41, 42 feet and weigh somewhere in the neighborhood of 47,000 pounds. And so just to uh, give you an idea of how big that is, here we have the whale shark. And I believe I took this picture down at the Atlanta Aquarium. Beautiful species. You've also heard of the uh, sawtooth shark, and then there's also the sawfish. So what's the difference between a sawtooth uh, shark and a um, sawfish? The difference between the two is that the, the um, saw shark has a pair of barbs that will stick out that you can see right along here, and the sawfish does not have those. So uh, the saw shark is a shark, the sawfish would be a ray. Another easy way to tell the difference between the sawfish and the saw shark is to look at the location of the gills. Now on the shark they have their gills on the side like all other sharks while uh, the sawfish has its gills on the uh, underside. So if we were to look at this one right here this is a sawfish not a saw shark. And if we were to look at shark attacks um, just around the world, there's roughly 70 to 100 per year. And then I've got it broken down so you can see the species. Uh, black tip, uh, hammerhead, great white, uh, and tiger, huge. Bull shark, again, a lot of these can be in fresh water. And then if you add these up, that's not going to add up to 100% because... Uh, when someone's being attacked by a shark, they're not going to look and go, oh, you know, I think it's a great white. Wait, no, there, there's that tip. It's, it's a, a black tip. So the remainder of these are just unknown. Now, if you've seen the movie Jaws, there's a character on the movie Jaws uh, played by Robert Shaw. Uh, the character was Quint. He owned the ship that, um, that um, Roy Schreider, who's the, this actor right here, and Richard Dreyfus go out uh, to hunt and kill the shark. During one scene, they're talking about the uh, attack on uh, the, the ship, the USS uh, Indianapolis, and that did happen. So there was a secret mission during uh, World War II for the atomic bomb to be dropped, uh, and the uh, there were two bombs. There was Fat Man and Little Boy. Well, the USS Indianapolis was helping to deliver uh, Little Boy on Hiroshima. And it was a, a big secret, uh, secret mission. And so there were um, almost 1,200 crewmen that were on board. And so um, 
the Japanese attacked the USS Indianapolis and they sunk it. And because this was such a, a secretive mission, they were not listed as being overdue for days. And so um, of the roughly 1,200 crewmen after the sinking, there were 900 that went into the, the water. And when they were in the water, you know, you had the salt water, so they had dehydration and they had uh, heat exposure and they had shark attacks. And so um, that scene from um, uh, Jaws, where Quint is describing this, is true. Um, of the 900 roughly individuals that went into the water, only 300 of them survived because of the shark attacks. This is a photograph of the largest known great white shark. You can see the comparison to a, um, a diver. Uh, this shark is known as Deep Blue. Deep Blue is roughly um, 20 feet long and 2.5 tons. Uh, Deep Blue has been uh, seen off the coast of Hawaii and they have tracked Deep Blue. He has gone through um, towards the, the Gulf of Mexico and even around the area of Florida. Uh, you can't see it in this picture, but Deep Blue does have some scarring on one of the sides. It helps for identification of Deep Blue. Uh, he's also been seen with two other uh, very large great white sharks. And so here you can compare Deep Blue, uh, his size versus uh, a giraffe and a car and then a human. And this is Shaquille O'Neal. So you can see there's a huge difference there. Uh, but a lot of interest in how Deep Blue was able to grow as large as he did. Now this is a picture of a Greenland shark. It's also known as a gurry shark or a gray shark. They're not really um, uh, known as being dangerous to humans. They're, they're fairly docile. But the interest in the Greenland shark uh, is that these are some of the oldest known shark species. And this particular shark right here, um, the age on this shark is guesstimated to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 400 years. So these are some of the longest living sharks. Uh, research would be, why do they, they live so long? Um, is there some kind of hint as far as, as why they are disease resistant and they, they have such a long lifespan that could be carried over to help humans in fighting various diseases? and age-related conditions. So uh, let's look at a shark adaptation. Uh, saltwater fish are constantly needing to drink 1% of their body weight every hour or they could uh, dehydrate. Um, sharks do not need to do this. Now the saltwater fish do this because the salt content in the water is much higher than the salt content in their body. However, sharks, sharks drink very little water they keep the salt content in their body at the same level or slightly higher than the salt content in the water. And so when they do uh, drink water, it's very, very little. And then when they do urinate, it's very concentrated. And so that, that means that they, they pee very little and therefore they need to drink very little water to replace what they've lost. Another uh, thing that I, I would like you to see is that um, God is so cool in letting us just see little glimpses of how he can manipulate the world that we live in. Now we're coming up on Easter and um, we're looking at Christ being risen from the grave and we know that he had a virgin birth. Well God also allowed virgin birth in some other species. Specifically you can see those in sharks. Now the zebra shark or the leopard shark uh, is a species that has been observed to have virgin birth. And so what happened was some Australian zookeepers had a leopard shark and um, she had not been around any uh, male sharks for over three years. And then she gave birth to um, three little shark babies. They were all females. Now this is called parthenogenesis. Uh, and this is where you can have the female will impart all of her DNA to the offspring to give the, the virgin birth. So it's an opportunity for a species to continue in the absence of the male. But the downside to this is that 
the offspring are only getting the DNA from one parent. And so the pups would be less able to fight off infection or to deal with different challenges because it has, you know, over time, they have less of a variety of DNA to compensate for those conditions. Now, shifting over to stingrays, you can tell a uh, male versus fem female stingray the same way as you can sharks by looking for those claspers. The stingrays are cartilage fish. They have a flattened body. This allows them to camouflage themselves in the environment. Uh, they agitate or they, they use those fins to use uh, to agitate and move the sand up and hide beneath it. Uh, their eyes are located on the top of their body uh, and their mouth is on the underside. So the stingray can't see the, the, um, the prey after it captures it but it can see what's going on up above. They do use a sense of smell and they do have electrical uh, scepters to uh, help them very similar to sharks. Most of the stingrays will have one or more of the barbed stingers on their tail. Uh, this is for self-defense. It can reach somewhere in the neighborhood of 14 inches. It has uh, two grooves that have venom, and venom glands and then the stinger is covered with a thin layer of skin and um, it, again it's only going to do this if it feels threatened. Stingrays in general are very docile creatures. Now I say that because we know the crocodile hunter Steve Irwin um, was struck with a barb in his chest um, in the heart and he passed away and many people are fearful of stingrays because of this. However, I want to show you a picture. And so here you can see a picture of Steve Irwin swimming over uh, a stingray. Now, the stingrays have uh, light sensitive structures here. And, and these um, structures here will signal to the stingray that there's a predator above. And then they will have an automatic reflex of pulling this stingray uh, barb up. And so the stingray was not um, trying to attack Steve Irwin. It's just that when he swam over the stingray, it signaled these receptors that there was a predator above and it was an, an automatic reflex that that stinger came up. And if you look at the location when that stinger came up, Steve Irwin was just in, in the exact position where if the barb hit him, he would die any other position of the body it would have been painful but he would have recovered so what i'm saying is that stingrays in general are extremely docile wonderful uh, creatures here i've got a, a picture of you sh uh, seeing stingrays giving birth and you can see right here it's about to give birth and then the baby stingray is born um, they can have anywhere between two and six babies a year and the lifespan of a stingray is somewhere between 15 and 25 years in the wild. The stingrays can range in size, but check out this one right here. This is the largest species of stingray. It can measure over 6 feet in length and weigh up to 790 pounds. Just an absolute beautiful, beautiful creature. And here we have manta ray from um, Spongebob. And there, here we have manta rays. We're going to talk to you about manta rays. You can do the same thing. If we look at this one right here, we can see that this is a female. You can see how they have their gills on the underside. Now, if we look at the manta ray, um, another name for manta ray is devil fish. Uh, but the uh, term manta ray, uh, the manta is Spanish and it means cloak or blanket. These have some of the largest brains of all of the fish. They're ovoviviparous, and that means that they have live birth. The, the eggs develop within the, the body of the manta ray, and then uh, when the babies are, are ready, then live birth occurs. They do have teeth, but they only have the teeth on the lower jaw, and um, these do not have any kind of venomous tail spikes that we would see on the stingrays. So that manta rays and stingrays are both cartilaginous fish, so they're chondrichthys. Um, they are related to sharks. They use gills uh, to take in oxygen out of the water. The stingrays will have those barbs with the, the uh, poisonous 
stingers, the manta rays do not. So again, going over the differences between the manta rays and the stingrays, the manta rays are going to be found in tropical and subtropical uh, temperatures in the ocean. Stingrays prefer warm water, but they can be in both fresh water and salt water. The manta rays, if we were to look at the silhouette, they're going to have a bat-like silhouette, where the stingrays, uh, their bodies are more flat, they can be round or, or triangular. The color of stingrays can vary depending on what kind of stingray you're looking at. As far as the mouth, the, uh, the manta rays have a, a wide open uh, gapping uh, mouth, and that's going to allow them to pick up zooplankton, where the stingrays have uh, very powerful uh, jaws and they have strong teeth in there and um, they use that to capture crustacean, fish, worms, so uh, they're going to eat larger prey than the manta rays. Now here we have a picture of a skate and here we have a, a female and you can see the absence of um, the claspers. Here we have a, a male stingray and you can see the presence of the claspers and that leads us to a very important thing to notice. So if you've ever seen the movie Finding Nemo and you'll notice that the stingray is the teacher in Finding Nemo and if you think back that teacher had that male voice and is, is drawing uh, Nemo and his friends over and he, he teaches them each day. However, if we look at that picture here, and here we have Dory, you're going to notice he has that male voice. But if you look, they drew the stingray as a female. Just something for you to think about. And then finally, um, what is a skate? Uh, there are some differences between skates and stingrays. Uh, your skates do not have a venomous stinger uh, or a barb on their tail. Uh, they can have rows of spikes instead to protect them, and they have more of a triangular shape to their body.